Hello people, Bear here, and today we're gonna take a look at one trend I noticed in the Scarlet and Violet era. Most specifically, we're gonna take a look at what I noticed, what are the cards that tend to rise the most in the Scarlet and Violet era based on facts. So we're gonna take a look at them and experience as well. So what I was able to observe these months as well as what I was able to capitalize on these past months. So as you can see, we're going to start off with Poldi Evolved. We'll take a look at PE, Paradox, and Temporal, and we'll see what have in common the cards that have spiked up the most in price. So hopefully we'll be able to capitalize on them in the future. Now, I'm not telling you anything. I'm not telling you this is a secret. You cannot get rich because of this, mainly because of two things. If I knew this is going to get you rich, then I'll be rich. And if I also knew this is going to get you rich, then I wouldn't be telling you, but I would just keep it as a secret and keep on getting rich. So obviously I don't have a match one, but I'll just gonna go over what I have noticed and see what you guys think about it. Now, before I get started, just wanna shout out to the Discord, which is growing. We hit over a hundred members in the Discord and we are at above 500 subs here on YouTube. So feel free to join, it's absolutely free. So here I created a new channel, as you can see, pretty self-explanatory name where I basically go over what I see is happening in the market. I, as you can see, I utilize my bot, the tool that I created for the European market and soon for the American market as well. So I go over that data. If you want to know more then I recommend you watch this video popping up right here. And uh, so basically that's about it. I so I just wanted to give a shout out as well as mention the new channel. So I think I wasted too much of your time already. So without further ado, let's get started here with Poldi Evolve. Now, what I want to show you and the main denominator, so the common denominator of today's video is going to be what are the cards that have performing the best or at least among the best and what do they have in common? Now, one thing I noticed they all have in common is there are cards that were below $20, 20 euros. So there were cheap cards, again, below 20, in some cases below $10, 10 euros, and they were able to outperform other cards in the set. Now, if we take a look at the right shoe here, as you can see, the card was about 15 to $20, and it is now 2X. So it was able to gain 100% in price over this time span. As you can see, the bottom was pretty much around December 2023. Now, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying if you're able to get the bottom, but once price stabilizes, at least for the short term, now this could go to 100, this could go to five, I don't know, nobody knows. If we knew, we'd all be rich. What I'm saying is, once price stabilizes, all these cards have seen gains. Now, Trender is another one. It was again in the 2015, bottom of 15, so I'm not gonna consider that. I would say in the 20, you could have gotten this in the 20s back in the days, and now it is in the 30s, it did get all the way up to 45, but it is now in the 30. If we check on listings, then we can, let's go to page number three. You can see 35, so you can get it for about 30, 35 dollars near mint. Chen Pao is a similar one. Unlike the other two, it's a special illustration rare. So we'll, we'll touch on that, the difference between how illustration rares and SIR are performing. As you can see here, it did get all the way down to 17. But to be fair, after this, so this went from July to October, you could argue this two month time span was enough to stabilize. So I'm not gonna lie, you could have bought here and find yourself all the way down here. So I'm not playing games and tricks. I'm being honest. If you look at this, you could have thought this was the market stabilizing up and down between 28 to 24. You could have bought here, ended up here, and now we're back at break even. So this kind of like a loser that would happen. Again, I'm don't have a match one. I don't know the future. Losers will happen. This is a risky market. Not anything is going to go up. It's not a guarantee that anything will go up. Even booster boxes, as controversial it can be, will will they go up? Nobody knows. Can they go up? Absolutely. Everything could go up and everything can go down. But seeing that they will go up. As I always say, I think it's pretty misleading. Now, Chiyu is another one, the other legendary. As you can see, you can argue it was stabilizing in the 20s, so you could have bought here in the 20s, and you'll be now in the 30s after a big spike all the way up to 40. 
As a common denominator, one thing I like to do is when I buy singles for short term plays, and I did talk about it in this video right here, which should be popping up, as well as I do talk about it in the non financial advice channel on the Discord, I like to sell at least half of it, if not all of my stake, once it gets to 100%. Now, will it get to 100%? I don't know. If it does, then I like to sell. That is a guarantee. If it does get to 100%, I will sell something. Now, next one is Paradox Rift. And once again, the best performing cards were cards that were sitting at $20 or below. They were stable for a period of time at 20 or below. One is going to be the Steelix. As you can see, it was stable in the $10 and it's now all the way up to 23. I personally bought three copies of these in the European market back when they were nine euros. Groudon is another one that many people make fun of me on the Discord as I did buy eight Groudons back when they were 23 euros and I still have four. As you can see, you can argue that it was stabilizing in the mid 20s or 25. And as you can see, you don't need me to say it is above $50. So over 2x. Ilvatar is the most recent one which I talked about in one of my videos. And it did spike. You can again you can safely argue this was consolidation right below eight dollars and it did 2x in a very short period of time. So again, after a spike, I am expecting a pullback. Will price hold at let's say 12, 15 dollars? Once again, I don't know, nobody knows. We'll find out. Another one is an Altaria, which it differs from the previous three because it's not an illustration rare, but it is an SIR, just like Chim Pao and Chi Yu. As you can see, again, you could have safely argued, let's say you thought it was stabilizing in the 25s, it is now selling in the 35s, so about a 50% gain. Now, last but not least, Temporal Forces, as you can see here. Now, Temporal Forces is a newer one. What happened with Temporal Forces, I'll give you this, is obviously this, the drop after release right here. And then this basically spike, which is a common denominator for Gasly, Metagross, as well as our book is now starting to move. So mainly Gasly and Metagross. Basically, this is the train the left for other illustration rares, such as Groudon, Ilvatol, Steelix. So after people capitalize on those, it is highly possible that they went on and bought these cards up. Now, I talked about I talked about it in one of my video called the next best thing, where I basically go over how people will always look for what is the next best thing. So let's say you're like me, you're an average Timmy, and you see Groudum go from 25 to 50. My pop on your mind is Okay, so that car is gone 2x in three weeks. What is the next card that is going to do the same? What is the next best thing? I missed out on Groudon. How can I capitalize on the next best thing? One answer could have been Gasly. One answer could have been Metagross. That's what I talked about in that video, which I highly recommend you go take a look at. Now, to sum up this video, what did all these cards have in common? Most of them were illustration rares. All of them were below the 20 to $25 range after they stabilized. If you compare the more, most expensive cards, so if we take the Yana for instance, the Yana was pretty expensive release and it did nothing but drop. Let's take the Rory Moon. Once again, the Rory Moon was the most expensive card from Paradox Rift as released and it did nothing but drop. Iron Leaves, if you remember, was the most expensive card ever released from the Portal Forces, and what it did, it did nothing but drop. Now, if you look at these cards, what they have in common is they've been flat for a couple of months. So here we have Iron Leaves, or Rory Moon here, it's been flat for uh, two to three months actually, and the Iona, if I can find it right here, has been flat again for a few months. Now, does that mean they're stabilized and they're going to go up? Once again, if I knew, first of all, I would have been telling you. Second of all, I'd be rich. And though you may speculate that if I did tell you and I already bought these cards, it would play to my advantage. Sneaky me, I don't do that. Maybe. Or if I do, I'll tell you. I don't know.
I guess you'll never know. Anyways, hope you get to my point of the video. What did all those cards that perform well have in common? And will we be able to capitalize on them in the future? As always, if you enjoyed the video, I would highly appreciate if you subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you in the Discord, and I'll see you in the next one.